welcome to section two of key area one of unit three for national five and in this section we're still on ecosystems key area but we're looking at food chains and food webs and then we're going to finish off a little bit with niche at the end okay so we'll be looking first of all at how food chains and food webs show feeding relationships in an ecosystem You should be able to, by the end of this, identify producers, consumers, herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, predator or prey on a food chain. This is something that they just expect you to do. Quite a few of these words they expect you to know from primary school, carnivore, omnivore, herbivore, uh, predator, prey. Hopefully you've heard these words before. The ones that should seem unfamiliar may be producer and consumer. Uh, the second one, that is a skill based question. I'll try and touch on it in this video, but realistically, you just need to practice it. Uh, you need to get some exam questions. You need to get some questions set by your teacher in practicing describing the effect of when you take away a species from a food web, what happens to the other species in terms of food availability or predation. This is where people tend to fail, fall down at these question types. They start talking about, you know, long interlinked relationships basically a species will increase or decrease if it has more food or less food and it will increase or decrease if it has less predation or more predation and then we'll finish off with niche at the end Okay, so things that only eat plants are called herbivores. Hopefully you know this from primary school. Things that only eat meat or other animals are called carnivores. Things that eat both plant and meat are known as omnivores. Okay, om meaning kind of all. Now, producers and consumers, this is a bit new. A producer is an organism which makes its own energy. All plants are producers because they can make their own food in a process called photosynthesis. Okay, so all plants are producers. And what's more that's special about producers, all food chains and food webs start with a producer. Okay, so if we look back at all the food chains in the world, all the food webs in the world, they will start with a plant or a producer, but basically a plant. Okay, now this is why plants are so crucial for us. This is why it's really important that we don't go around destroying plants willy nilly. It's because they basically, the food that we eat eats the plants. And if the plants, if the, you know, if the food that we eat runs out of uh, food, then we're gonna die as well. Okay, so it's really important for that reason, but also for other reasons of, it would be nice to not be the only living things on this planet. That, that would be good. A consumer is an organism that must eat another organism to gain energy. Now that could be a plant or it could be another animal. We, as humans, we are consumers. We consume our food. Anything that's essentially basically not a plant is gonna be a consumer. So insects are gonna consume plants or other insects. Uh, these groundhog, squirrel type things, they are going to consume plants. They are consumers, okay?
food chains are a di is a diagram. It's not a real thing. You can't literally go out in life and see arrows pointing at stuff. It's a diagram that shows feeding relationships and the movement of energy between organisms. The reasons why food chains are important, they help us understand how an ecosystem works. And if we understand how an ecosystem works, we understand how to minimize our human damage on that ecosystem. We can understand the importance of all of these organisms within that ecosystem. The arrows in a food chain do not represent what eats what, okay? They represent the direction and flow of energy. So in this one, we've got our producer, which is the grass, okay? And that is going to, the energy from the grass is gonna go into the grasshopper, because the grasshopper eats it, okay? The energy from the grasshopper is gonna go into the frog, because the frog eats the grasshopper. The energy from the frog into the snake. Now, let's use some of those producer-consumer type terms as well. What we can say is the grass is the producer of this food chain. It's at the start. Everything else, the, the grasshopper, the frog, the snake, and the hawk, they are all consumers. Sometimes you might have heard the term primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. You don't really need to know this. You just need to know the difference between a producer and a consumer. So, you could copy that in, but that's okay. A food web shows all of the food chains found in an ecosystem and basically how they interact with each other. In real life, rabbits don't only eat literally just grass. They might eat a range of different plant material. Same thing for grasshoppers, don't eat just grass. They might have a go at grains. Some birds will eat more than one food source. Food chains show this, sorry, food webs show this information. Now you can extract food uh, chains out of food webs. So for example, a complete food chain from this food web would be uh, grass, rabbit, fox. Okay, that's a food chain that involves three organisms that I've extracted out of this food web and it goes from the producer at the start to the top level consumer at the top. Important note about food chains, they do not stop halfway up a, a feeding relationship. Okay, so for example, we would never end on mice in a food chain because the mice get eaten by owls. The only things we can end on are owls and foxes, nothing else, okay? So we've got our three producers down at the bottom, carrots, grasses, grains. Everything else in this food web is a consumer, okay? It is going to consume stuff in order to survive and get energy from it, okay? Um, Now, you should pause the video here. There are eight different food chains within this food web, okay? So I've given you one already, grass, rabbit, fox. What you've got to try and do is identify the remaining seven. So I'd pause the video here and give that task a go. I'm just gonna give you three seconds to find the pause button. Okay, answer.
Now, again, you want to pause it here. I'm not going to run through all of them. OK, so pause it here and see if you were right. But these are all the possible food chains that you can extract out of that particular food web. OK, now, if you take one organism out of a food web, it can actually have devastating effects on the whole ecosystem. Uh, this link should be in the sway for you to use. It's actually how uh, wolves effectively can affect even the distribution of rivers. Uh, in Yellowstone National Park. It's actually fascinating that presence or absence of wolves actually influences rivers due to predation of things like um, elk, which influence beaver populations, which of course then lead to the river distribution. Remember, if you're in Perth, you should definitely go and look uh, for signs of the beavers that are along the North Inch Park. I've seen them, they've like, chewed away some tree trunks. It's just nice. Okay, so on this food chain, if the grass is removed, everything dies. Okay, absolutely everything dies. Even though the hawk doesn't eat grass, the food for the hawk does rely on the grass. Okay, so we've got rabbits that eat grass. If all the grass is gone, rabbits are dead, hawk has less food. If all the grass is gone, mice are dead, hawk has less food. The snake doesn't have any food either. Okay, and again, if all the grass is gone, grasshopper, no food. Now, it doesn't have to be a direct arrow that touches in order for there to have an influence. So, for example, we could ask a question like, what would happen to the number of mice if all of the lizards died? OK, so we could ask that question. The answers to these must be in terms of do they have more or less food? Do they have more or less predators? Using that information, you should then be able to say they're going to increase because either they have less predators or more food or they're going to decrease because they have more predators or less food. So looking at that example, let's pretend the grass is still here. OK, so the question was, what would happen to the mice if we killed all of the lizards? Well, for one thing, if we killed the lizards, think about what's going to happen to grasshopper numbers. OK, grasshopper numbers, well, you could argue it either way, actually. They're going to go up or they're going to go down. Um, you could also look at the hawk numbers. So we kill all the lizards. Suddenly, the hawk only has four options from the buffet of life meaning that the mouse is going to have more predation on it, which should mean that the mouse numbers drop. OK, um, another reason why the mouse numbers might drop, take out the lizard. There's going to be more grasshoppers. More grasshoppers means less grass, less food for the mouse. Mouse numbers are going to decrease. So even though the mice and the lizard aren't touching in terms of arrows, they can have an impact on each other.
Okay, niche is just the last part to cover on this one. Uh, so we're looking at the, the essentially defining niche. Okay, a niche is the role an organism plays within its community. Every organism should have a unique niche. This means it does stuff that none, no other organism does. It does at least one thing that's unique that no other organism does. And that might be it eats different types of food. It's got different types of habitat. Uh, it's got different predators. It's got different diseases that it's affected by. But it's got to be something unique. Uh, if you do business at all, you might have heard of niche in terms of, you know, setting up a business. Imagine you want to set up a business in Perth, for example. OK, um, a bad idea to set something up would probably be a hair or nail salon. The reason for this is there are loads of them already there. The competition is going to be really, really high, whereas you probably want to set up a business that that doesn't already exist here, something that's going to provide a unique service to the public. And then you get less competition. Uh, so, for example, Anandos, there isn't one here. So it might be a good idea to set one up please. And uh, then loads of people go to it. There'll be very little competition for it, um, except for perhaps, you know, sort of one of the other chicken type producer places. OK, which actually I really like, too. Um, but yeah, is that with business, the idea is you want to find a unique niche. It's the same in life. You want to find a unique niche uh, as an organism. You want to do something that not many other creatures do to reduce competition, competition for food, competition for survival, competition for space. So a niche includes the resources an organism needs in its ecosystem. So, for example, it could be its light availability. It could be the temperature that it needs. It could be the nutrient availability that it needs. OK. Uh, it could also include the interactions that it has with other organisms. So, for example, competition and predation. It's a worth having a look at the exam questions on these because they do tend to be just be a little description of the things about that organism are its niche. No species share identical niches. If they did, it would work, result in competition for all resources. And this is where we get something called natural extinction. OK, there is such a thing as natural extinction. It's a natural process. But the idea is we've got two different species fighting it out to see which one's going to become the dominant one. The one that is less good at what it does will die off and that will leave the species that is stronger behind. OK, so to summarize all of your stuff, a food chain is a diagram that shows the transfer of energy through an ecosystem. Uh, a producer is an organism, usually a plant that can produce its own food. A consumer is an organism that eats another to gain energy. A food web is a diagram that shows several food chains linked together in an ecosystem. 
Herbivore eats only plants. Carnivore eats only meat uh, or other animals. Uh, omnivore eats both plants and animals. And a niche is the role an organism has in an ecosystem. Again, lots of vocabulary again. I really recommend flashcards on this one. And remember to practice your food chains questions. What happens to the number of species X if we take away species Y? Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.